Hi, I'm Bree with BCRN Aesthetics. And I'm Gentry from Gentry Kelly Cosmetics. So last week was Friday, September the 13th, and a harvest moon. So we all know that this office is crazy enough without it being Friday the 13th or a harvest moon. So I got to the office early and saged the entire place. As soon as the girls walked in, I'm sure they thought it was crazy as I was running around the office with my little sage and making them let me sage them also. But I'm telling you, it worked. We had a great Friday closed out a great day for both the JKC side and the BCRN side, and there weren't any crazies in the office. Wait, how do you stand at the airport? <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it at the airport. Same <laughs> So on Friday the 13th, Brie was saging everywhere and everyone, and I just was not going to let her sage me. You don't want to be saged? No, I'm okay. I can not Zena's not letting me sage her. I didn't really want to let her sage me. I didn't want to smell like sage all day. But since the whole place already smelled like it, I was like, okay, this is enough. I think we'll be okay and we're safe. So Rosina was the only one that wouldn't let me sage her. But even though she didn't let me sage her, she had a great day on Friday, the 13th, Harvest Moon. Starting today, I'm gonna to be doing more Facebook Lives. I'm gonna be doing more YouTube videos and trying to do a lot more content on social media because that's what you guys want to see is that part of what I do. And it's fun to me and I really, really enjoy that. So we'll be doing a Facebook Live today to ask questions about packaging because I want my clients feedback on what they want too. You guys are spending your money with me. It matters what you guys think. If I can only do two, tell me which ones you would want to do. Um, also, do you like the soft touch matte black or should I do gaudy and go with like rhinestones or snakeskin. I kind of like the matte black. So here's what everybody said. There's more face matte black. I like the four and stick with black. I like glossy black. With our manufacturer discontinuing a lot of these things that we sell in our lines, like the empty eyeshadow palettes, which are just standard sizes of a one inch round, it's kind of like kicking me in the butt, pushing me out there and making me and forcing me to redesign our palettes and make them my own. So I am going to be doing a Facebook Live today with everyone on Facebook to see what they think and how, what size palette that I should go with that makes more sense for them. What size compacts would you guys like for your eyeshadows? So if you are not familiar with the Ginger Kelly Cosmetics eyeshadow system, so of course you guys are spending your money with me. I want something that you guys want, but I want it to also make sense for the company too. So a couple weeks ago, my packaging company sent me these compacts. Instead of creating your own mold, you can attach on to other people's molds that they've paid that, right? And then just change the plastic insert. So this thing is not connected to the outside. So I can make this whatever I want, right? So we have to just pretend and kind of set these out on here like this little insert's not on there. I think we can fit eight. And another thing that I was getting feedback on is it's really hard for people to get their eyeshadows out once they're in to see the color names on the bottom. So I already did make a suggestion that we put like those little finger slits in there that you could just pop them in and out of so they're not um, hard to get out. Someone said they have two looks for eyeshadow, so a four well would be good for them depending on how they feel in the so I have a lot of new projects coming up and I'm super excited about all of the new things and I'm going to be asking everybody for more of their feedback as I'm designing these things. So So they finally started our new house. We are so excited. They, there were some boards laid down, 
pretty sure they laid the boards down just to appease me and make me happy, but I don't care. It looked like they got started, and then today, I got a photo from the lady out there that they started pouring the slab. So we are super excited. They're telling us that it's a February close, so that probably means March, but we're excited. I did this, I thought that was cute, that you could put, if you like want to talk about blush and needle at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, like all the stuff that curls up when it's humid, mm -hmm. this keeps it like managed and staying in the you know? Mm -hmm. Last week, I had a little bit of a meltdown. Um, it's been a long time coming and it may be a little bit to do with hormones or just getting to the point where I just can't take anymore. But uh, long story short, I had a long talk with Sean on Friday night last week um, about where I am with the company and I've decided and him and I decided together that I think it's best that I take a big step back. Back in, I believe it was uh, March or April, we brought Allie back to be the general manager. But of course, it's just kind of like my personality, very type A, that I continued to micromanage my team and not let her have full control. So apparently Gentry's had enough and she's given me full control. But did she really? I think it's just a phase and she's gonna wanna take full control back. I need to pull myself back from the day-to-day -day operations. That's not something I need to be doing. That's why I hired a general manager with Bree so she could take over these duties. And I continued to hold on to the things that I didn't need to be doing, um, running the team meetings. I don't need to be doing any of that. I need to give her the, um, how you say, authority to be able to hire and fire, to be able to write people up without me sitting in on meetings with her and micromanaging. I can't do it anymore. When people make mistakes, I need to go to her. She needs to be my point of contact going forward. And I don't have any direct contact with anybody else that works here besides everyday, you know, fun stuff. But I don't need to be reprimanding people. I don't need to be writing people up. I don't need to be a part of that process at all. I'm here to design and build this company and at this point, that's all I can handle. I have a family I need to focus on and I don't need to be letting all of this pressure build up on me from the everyday mundane duties that I should not be doing. So now it's time for me to retire from that part of what I've been doing for so long. So that's all folks. We get lots of messages, uh, mostly on social media, from nurses, um, PAs, NPs, who are interested in breaking into the aesthetic industry. So Melanie, this is Melanie. Uh, Melanie and I have both been in the aesthetic industry for about 14 years. Um, a long time. A long, a long time. <laughs> Back then it was like the wild, wild west. There was nowhere to find information. There was not really like a training academy. Now, fortunately, there's lots of training academies and lots of great resources to reach out to, um, great injectors that share a lot of knowledge um, on their social medias or on their websites. So Melanie and I actually started an academy here here in our office called the Academy of Aesthetic Advancements. So whenever those nurses, PAs, NPs, um, even some MDs reach out to us, um, we typically just reference them to our website and have them come in and work with us in the office. So it's been a really great um, way to engage in those um, people who want to break into the aesthetic industry because I, I will be honest it's not hard it's not easy to break into this industry. Most people are surprised I think um, that there's so much uh, advanced learning that has to be uh, incorporated into your practice in aesthetics and so we're um, we're good about not just recommending you to our academy, but also guiding you to um, some of our um, colleagues who have uh, similar academies as well. Um, and uh, you know, we're honest with our, our students um, that we uh, schedule our own trainings. We just got back from one in Dallas. We're, we're going to Ice Band in a week, and um, Bree and I try to do at least two cadaver trainings a year. Um, so. Yeah. So, and that's the one thing about breaking into the aesthetic industry is you got to be ready to spend some money and time and effort um, because it is a continuous evolving industry and we are constantly learning. Um, I've been to like Melanie too, I think we've been to five or six conferences this year alone. Um, and 
It's, My husband's like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exhausting, but it's also exhilarating in that we learn so much and we learn from our colleagues. Um, so we also, that sort of transitioned us into starting um, an injectors network in the Houston area. So we have the Houston chapter already kind of started. We have called it Hain Houston Area Injectors Network, um, which has been wildly successful so far. It has really taken off and we're excited to be a part of that. Right. We've had good feedback too. Um, you know, the Injectors Network is, is kind of the larger scale. Houston Area Injectors Network is the kind of subchapter out of that, but we've had great feedback from our, our colleagues in the Houston area. And one of the most amazing things that have come of this is that you know everybody's kind of getting together and sharing knowledge, which is something that Bree and I didn't have 13 years ago, and we sort of developed on our own with happy hours, like, hey, have you seen this? Have you seen that? And this is just a more organized way to kind of approach that. Um, and, and actually our idea to try to create sustainability of knowledge in our practice. <laughs> It's like embarrassing this so gross. I got a surprise! Let's see oh, it! Blue. Blue. Oh, for Holly, it's gonna mess the little bag. That's kind of why I did it. Oh, it's, oh, it but look, forever? can y'all see how this is like metallic? Yes. Oh, it's blue! It? That's cute. Oh, that's so cool. Can y'all see it? Can yeah. you yeah. really see it? Okay. Look at baby bag. So we have to approve the size, the shape, and the oh, wait for it, wait for it. That is stupid cute. Look at that. Hallelujah. I know, so cute. I love little mini things. Well, wait, oh, I don't know. Oh, I know me too. I love little things. Look what at this. It, it says I love little Liam. things inside of it? No, look at it. Even better. Oh my gosh. Cute. I had some Louisiana tour dates booked last week. And I worked all day Wednesday, so I couldn't leave until later that night. And then I drove straight through Imelda. Very serious situation for South East Texas. Winnie, the town of Winnie, pretty much underwater. I'm driving through Winnie, Texas, and it's the worst part of the storm. It's lightning and thundering. I can't see out of my windshield. It's scary as So the only person that I could get in touch with that worked with me was Bree. And I just had to find somebody that I could give my last words to because I'm pretty sure I was gonna die. Wow. That was scary. So I'm trying to calm her down. I don't know what's happening. So I'm like, Amber, I'm not there. So I can't tell you what to do. But if you feel unsafe, turn around, don't drown. She was so nervous that she was gonna get fired. And I was like, listen, I will call Gentry myself. These women in Louisiana need to have their makeup done. They have appointments, Amber, get your ass there. Call for a helicopter, do what you gotta do. It's called making shit happen. She was just so nervous. I mean, I can imagine driving through floodwaters. I would have been super nervous too, but she was so cute because she, she was- these people need their makeup done. Forget she was it. actually nervous about her job. So I was stuck on that bridge for five hours. In that time, I saw two cars go underwater and a house. Cars are stuck. That is a house underwater right there. And my car is shaking from left to right. And it is the scariest thing ever. I cried super hard and I was super happy that the Coast Guard was finally there to save me. So I-10 is shut down indefinitely and my car is still there. She got stranded, the Coast Guard had to pick her up, then she went to a shelter. Like poor Amber, she went through the ringer last week. So within about eight hours, I ended up going to three different shelters. Um, I slept on a cot, they gave me food. I was on a bus and I saw some cows that were about to drown, that was super sad. Oh my goodness, look at the cows. A lot of families lost their homes, and there's lots of puppies with them, kids, babies. So definitely put me into perspective, like my situation, not that bad.
I just want to thank everyone that helped during the storm. You guys are the shit. So I'm finally safe at home and I slipped and got a concussion. Next time on Blush and Needle. And what the M Sculpt does is actually tightens the muscle um, and reduces the fat to give you these guns. All right, so I'm here to announce my engagement. A few days ago, we had so much activity on the Ring app. The, the first person, I think, what was it? Oh, it was a crack smoker.